Hi boys and girls, I'm the reading teacher and look at where we are today. We're at a lake. This morning I was out in the kayak and I found some turtles. Now, they were too quick for me to catch, but it got me thinking about turtles and I remembered I've got this great book about sea turtles and I thought you might like to hear it. This is a non-fiction book. Do you remember why an author writes a non-fiction story? That's right, to teach us something. They've got information in the book so we can learn something about the topic. The topic we're learning about today is sea turtles. Now, sea turtles aren't the kind of turtles I saw this morning in the lake. Where do you think I would be able to see a sea turtle? Right, in the ocean or the sea. But I thought you might like to hear the story, Turtle Tide, The Ways of Sea Turtles written by Steven Swinburne, illustrated by Bruce Hiscock. Now, boys and girls, this story is all about this mother turtle and what happens to her. She comes out of the ocean to lay her eggs and then she's gone. She doesn't get to wait to see her babies hatch. She doesn't ever see them grow up. It's just what sea turtles do. We're gonna take a journey with this mother the journey starts with her as she comes out of the ocean to lay her eggs and then she leaves and then what happens to those eggs? She's gonna lay a hundred of them. How many baby turtles do you think will make it to the sea? We're gonna find out. Now you just told me the reason that an author writes a nonfiction story is to teach us something. So your job while I'm reading is to think of something interesting that you learned and you're gonna share it with me at the end. Here we go, let's read Turtle Tide. The mother sea turtle swam on and on through the dark sea, pulled by a great longing to come ashore. To leave the safety of the water was strange. Her life had been spent in the open ocean but she knew she must lay her eggs in a sandy nest. She moved closer and closer to the long, silent coast. The sea turtle rose to the surface to breathe. The beach was near. She could hear the surf and see the long ridge of high dunes in the early evening light. She raised her nose above the waves and smelled the wind coming off the shore. She swam hard and rode the incoming wave. The sea charged onto the beach. She crawled out of the surf and lowered her beak into the wet sand. She remembered this place. She remembered the beach. This was the windswept Atlantic coast where she had been born many years ago. She felt awkward on land. She used her front flippers to heave her body step by step into the high tide line. Her breathing came in deep, hollow gasps. She inched forward a few steps and stopped. She lifted her head and gazed down the beach as if she saw something, as if she heard something. She was very cautious. Cautious is another word for careful. She's stopping to make sure she doesn't see anything or hear anything, that it's safe for her. What do you think she's going to do in this spot on the beach. Let's find out. The sea turtle found her spot and settled her large body into the soft dune. She faced away from the sea and began digging a hole with her hind limbs. Each paddle-shaped flipper scooped sand and flung it away from the hole. Sand flew into her face and tears rinsed salt and sand from her eyes. Her hind flippers reached as far down as they could. She made the hole wide at the bottom and narrow at the top like the shape of a vase. She rested her chin in the dune and exhaled loudly. The hole was finished. Without looking back once, she began laying eggs, leathery cream colored eggs the size of ping pong balls. They dropped in ones, twos and threes, wet and glistening in the light of a rising full moon. Her shell, covered with ancient barnacles and seaweed, heaved silently. Once she began to lay the eggs, the sea turtle would not stop, could not stop. 
Tears flooded her eyes. She raised her head slightly every time an egg came as if she wanted to see what was falling from her. The eggs piled up, 10, 20, 60, 100. The mother turtle wasted no time before covering the eggs. Her rear flippers pushed sand into the opening. She shifted from side to side and worked herself over the nest site. Her weight packed down the sand until there was no sign of a hole. Having tucked her bundle of eggs into the warm dune, the sea turtle dug her flippers into the sand and slowly wheeled around. She plodded straight for the water, leaving a wide set of tracks. She reached the wet sand and tasted the sea. Waves broke over her crusty old shell and she kicked free of the land. The turtle dove into the face of the moon, a giant yellow moon sleeping on the sea. She didn't look back. She swam on and on. Two raccoons prowling the dunes discovered the turtle nest. They dug through the sand and ate as many eggs as they could reach. And what had been 100 was now 64. Five days later, the baby turtles somehow knew it was time. Deep in the dark pit, the hatchlings ripped free of their eggshells and pushed and pulled in a wild scramble to the surface. The mass of baby turtles surged to the top, teeming over the rim of the nest like froth spilling from a boiling pot. The hatchlings wasted no time. Without seeing the water, they saw that the light above the ocean was brighter and they moved toward it. They streamed in small groups toward the sea, climbing up the hills and tumbling down the valleys of sand. They scuttled across the face of the flat beach, marking the sand with hundreds of tiny tracks. The open beach was a dangerous place for small, soft turtles. Ghost crabs with oversized pinchers seized those hatchlings that came close to their underground burrows and hauled them below. And what had been 100 was now 22. The sea turtle hatchlings reached the edge of the nest, the wet sand. Faster and faster the turtles crawled. A wave dashed onto the beach and scooped up the first batch of hatchlings. They tossed and spun in the wash and then rushed headlong into the surf. A great blue heron flying over the breaking surf spotted the rush of hatchlings. The bird came to rest by the edge of the sea and plucked helpless turtles from the sand in water. And what had been 100 was now only 10. The ten young turtles swam through the foam and froth of the sea, lighter than air. They popped to the surface to breathe, and down again they swam. A sand shark cruised the shallow water and ripped through the band of little turtles, eating as many as it could see. And what had been 100 was now only two. A pair of laughing gulls flew out to sea to bring fish back to their nesting young. They spied the thrashing water made by the fin of the feeding shark. One gull swooped low, snatched a hatchling in its beak, and swung back toward its nest. And what had been 100 was now only one. The second gull spotted the last turtle and plucked it from the water. The bird turned to shore. A larger herring gull dove in to steal the prize and jammed its beak into the outstretched neck of the laughing gull. The small gull reeled and screamed and the hatchling fell free. The big herring gull rolled to retrieve its prey, but the hatchling disappeared in the wash of breaking waves. The sky turned red and gold as the sun rose over the edge of the earth. The lone sea turtle hatchling beat the waves with flying swim strokes. With its sea compass already fixed, 
the little turtle made it straight for the open sea, pulled by a longing to be someplace far away. And what had been 100 was now one, following the ancient path to home. Now, boys and girls, the author ends the story with facts about sea turtles, but we already learned some facts about sea turtles from the story. Remember I asked you to be thinking of something you learned. Can you tell me right now, what's that one thing that stood out to you as interesting about sea turtles? You've got some great, great thoughts. And I'm glad you learned so much about sea turtles. I just think it's so fascinating that without a mother or a father, they find their way to the ocean. It's also interesting, all the predators that are after those baby sea turtles. And do you think that that's why the mother sea turtle lays so many eggs? Because she knows that only a small amount of her babies will actually make it to the ocean. The ocean is an interesting place, isn't it? And if you're excited about sea turtles or other animals from the ocean, you can go to your library and go to the nonfiction section and check out some books about ocean animals. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to go enjoy this lake, and I hope you have a great day.